Hello and welcome to the Monday, August 19th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick guest diary from Friday from one of our undergraduate interns, Justin Leibach, is uh, talking about how he wrote a quick script that summarizes the web honeypot data from our honeypots. We use a little custom Python script in order uh, to collect the data. So the script that Justin created did then uh, summarize the data and basically create some reports to gain a better insight without having to dig through a lot of logs. Also a nice case study on how powerful these custom log summary tools can be and how easy they can be to create, in particular for a smaller organization that may not have access to a lot of the big enterprise log monitoring tools. I'm talking about our web application honeypot logs. One common request that we're seeing is requests for various environment variable files. I've written about this a couple times before, like for example, how Twilio environment variables were targeted for a while, and also how they're targeting these .env files and variations thereof in general. Well, uh, Palo Alto now has a story where they sort of followed up on some of these scans and and what they found is that what they found was that attackers are going after cloud credentials and are using them then to launch extortion attacks against affected websites. They're offering a number of common sense techniques to prevent these attacks. But of course, if you're into common sense, you're probably not going to expose your environment variable files. And ever so often people do something actually useful uh, with machine learning and artificial intelligence. You may have seen last week, Google sort of outlined its roadmap with some of the new Android and Pixel features. And Bleeping Computer is reporting that the one feature that I don't think was really highlighted does now allow users uh, to automatically redact credit card numbers and passwords while they share their Chrome browser screen on Android. Interesting feature, of course, the question is how well it will work in particular with passwords, with credit cards, it shouldn't really be all that difficult. And of course, please don't fall for the old trick where people are claiming that uh, passwords and credit card numbers are automatically redacted from various messenger clients and then trick you into trying it out. But I guess no matter how much AI or machine learning is being applied, Google still has a hard time getting rid of malicious advertisements on its own search engine that advertises Google's own products. The latest case, again, Malwarebytes revealed this, uh, shows that if you entered at the time Google followed by one of Google's products, uh, something like Google Play or the like, then you will be seeing a list of links where the top three links in a screenshot that Malwarebytes shows is all fake pages. What makes it even more interesting is that the links are actually going to a google.com page. They're using lookerstudio.google.com. That's a Google product that allows you to create web pages with reports and the like. And they're using this Google product to actually then impersonate Google's own pages and extract information from victims and also bombarding them with a fake and virus messages. Personally, I think the fake antivirus is a little bit of a letdown. They could have probably done something more intelligent uh, with uh, this kind of attack. Also, they apparently have compromised an advertiser's uh, account, and that particular advertiser has been compromised in the past and used to then place these malicious ads. And if you have a higher-end uh, bicycle with a Shimano electronic uh, shifter, well, uh, you may need to patch the firmware of your bike. 
Researchers published a paper outlining some of the risks in the wireless protocols being used, in particular the AND or ANT uh, protocol is being used here. This protocol, I've seen it in the past, mostly sort of for exercise equipment to report things like speed and uh, settings and the like. But apparently in the Shimano case, this is also being used uh, to then affect the shifter. The most straightforward attack here is a replay attack where essentially an attacker would record the commands being sent to the shifter by a particular rider and then could use it to shift the bike and essentially cheat in a bike race. Denial of service attacks are another uh, issue, but of course denial of service attack with wireless technologies is usually not that difficult. However, in this case, an attacker could launch an out of service attack against specific bikes instead of just uh, shutting down the transmitters for all of the bikes in a particular area. Well, this is it for today. I'm also planning a brief video about the Windows IPv6 vulnerability. May go live on Monday, maybe Tuesday. Uh, we'll see how it all works out. But if you're interested in some sort of background on that, uh, just watch out for that video. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.